Hey guys, what is up and welcome back. As you guys can tell from the title of today's video, we are going to be doing another Top 5 of Wednesday. I'm actually really excited to do this one because the prompt is books you wish you would have had when you were younger, and I have quite a few of those, and I'm really excited to talk to you guys about them. Most of these, if not all of these, I have spoken about before on my channel, but I don't think I've spoken about how significant or important they were to me. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. So the first book I have here is a book that I feel like I would have needed when I was younger, not because I suffered from anxiety so severely like I do now, but because I feel like it would have been a great resource once I developed anxiety. I feel like it would have been nice to know just a tiny bit about it because I've never really read about it or experienced it up until becoming like an adult. I think I was 23, 24 when I started getting anxiety, but that would be Eliza and Her Monsters. And I wouldn't say this is the most groundbreaking book ever, but I do identify with Eliza quite a bit. She does write a webcomic. She falls in love with a boy who's a little bit more dysfunctional or just as dysfunctional as she is. And I feel like this would have been a really good resource for me because I do identify with Eliza a lot. I do identify with not wanting to reach out to people, not wanting to really let people in and suffering from this this disease essentially and suffering alone and she does kind of try to wall herself off and deal with it all herself and that is something that I truly suffer from. If you guys saw last week's vlog that I put up, I have trouble reaching out to people and I feel like Eliza does too and this would have been a really good resource to teach me that I need to reach out when I am hurting. The next book I wish I would have had when I was younger I feel like also plays a lot into death and kind of accepting what has happened and moving on and just continuing with your life and trying to stay positive and building relationships and that'd be Neanderthal opens the door to the universe. You guys have heard me speak about this book before. I rave about it all the time and that is because it is wonderful. I think that Preston does a really good job of not just making you care for the characters but really feel for the characters and really put yourself in their shoes. This book is very funny. I love that the main character has a lot of self-deprecating humor. That is something that I really love about Cliff. But what I really like about this book is Cliff's older brother actually has committed suicide and Cliff is kind of left wondering what he wants to do with his life, where to go. He gets picked on a lot. He lashes out from being picked on. And this would have been a great resource for me, I think, when it comes to death in my life because Cliff obviously ends up developing friendships and moving on and kind of rebuilding his life and I think that would have been a really great resource to have. I've experienced death quite a bit in my life. Um, a lot of it, a, a couple of them were really really terrible for me and I feel like having this book would have definitely helped me just a little bit get through that. It would have been a book that I think I would have gone back and read and tried to kind of work through what was happening to me so I wish I would have had Neanderthal opens the door to the universe when I was dealing with those things and if you have not read this book I would 100% recommend it. It's a lot more than it is marketed as and I think it goes a lot deeper than it's marketed as and it's totally 100% worth the read. Now this book is a little bit different. This is more so the entire series. I think this entire series has some wonderful life lessons that we can all learn from it. But what I really learned from it is just what it means to be human, what it means to be a human and make mistakes that we make and try to move on and learn from the mistakes that we make as humans. And that would be the Sleeping Giants or the Themis Files. I love this series. You guys have heard me rave about it before. But this series, if you have not heard me rave about it, I believe there is a video on my channel of a wrap up for all of the series. I believe if it is, I'll link it in the cards up above. But this series has so much depth and so much character development just as people like who we are as humans Not just like the characters themselves but the race the humanity us. I just I love it so much Especially the last one the last book has so many life lessons you can learn from it that it is baffling I just think this is such a wonderful series if you're not familiar with what this series follows This series actually follows a doctor who is when the story starts out She's very very young and she's biking on a bike that her dad actually got her for her birthday And she falls into a hole and in the hole is actually a a giant robotic hand and then the book kind of fast forwards to her actually helping um, the government put the ro robot back together and there are three books in this series it is 100% probably my one of my very favorite series that I've ever ever read. I love it so so much. If you guys are not familiar once again I will link the video down below. Any videos I have on this I'll link down below. But like I said this has so many life lessons on humanity in it. I think everybody should read it. Now the next I have a book that I don't know what I was expecting when I first picked it up. It was actually sent to me by one of my very very best friends and it ended up being so much more than I thought it was going to be and it'd be We Are the Ants by Sean David Hutchinson. This is the only book by Sean I've ever read. I do own other ones and I do eventually want to get to them. But what this book actually follows is our main character Henry is trying to move on from the suicide of his boyfriend. And he gets picked on a lot at school and at home. He has a really bad life and he's given the 
option to save humanity. These aliens come and actually start abducting him and they give him a choice. They say, okay, you can press this button by this date to save humanity and if you don't, humanity will be wiped clean. And the reason why this book is really cool is you get to kind of follow Henry along while he's just experiencing life and trying to decide whether or not humanity is worth saving. But what really gets me is the end of this book when Henry finally gets help. And this is one of those books that you can kind of, you're left to wonder, do aliens really exist? Is that something that's really happening or is that all in his head? But really it's just the mental health aspect of this book that I absolutely love and I wish I would have had when I was much younger. I feel like this would have definitely helped like 15 year old me. I don't even know when this was published. 2016. Um, but I wish I would have had this when I was going through my really, really dark times in high school. And I feel like this would have been a book that really, really touched me and really, really helped me. Now the very, very last book I have here is a book that I was so, so excited to get and I'm so glad to have read it. And I know that there's a lot of negative reviews and it's one of those books that people read and too often I see reviews where they say, reading this book was really hard to stomach and I didn't like it because of that or I didn't relate to it so I didn't really like it and honestly this is definitely not a book for everybody but it's definitely a book for me and that'd be Turtles All the Way Down by John Green. As somebody who suffers with severe OCD, I have two different types of OCD, both of which are talked about in this book, I bawled my eyes out. This is such an amazing book for somebody like me to see myself represented like this. And it's really frustrating when I see people who say, oh, I didn't like it because I didn't identify with it or it was really hard to read because there are a lot of really hard things in this book, but there are things that people do suffer with, some things that I suffer with. And if you don't like the book because you don't like the book, like that's one thing. It's just those reviews that I was reading that really upset me. I love John Green as a person. I think that he is phenomenal. I think he's kind. I think he's smart. I think he's funny. But this book itself is a reflection of John. John, if you're not familiar, does suffer with OCD. And just having this book in my life and it brought to me in a way that was pretty at least for me, easily digestible, because this book does follow our main character, Aza, and she wants to be like a detective, essentially, because when a boy, a rich boy from her school, when his dad disappears, she actually sets out to try to help find him, because there's quite a big reward for any information on him, and there's a little bit of a love story, there's some friends, I really like her friend, um, but... I would definitely say it's the OCD rep in this that really makes me love it. I like that John kind of tried to make it a little bit more of just like a nice soft contemporary, but there are points in this book like when she's eating hand sanitizer because she's worried about infection, when she's having thought spirals, things like that that I 1000% identify with. And I am so thankful to have this book now, but I would have loved to have had it when I was younger because I... When I first started getting my OCD, I tried to tell my birth mom about it, and she just thought I was crazy, and she never sought out help for me for it, and I think if I would have had this book, I would have been like, I have OCD, and I could have gone to her and been like, I have OCD, these are the symptoms of OCD, please take me to a doctor so that I can get diagnosed, and so I can get on some type of medicine. So I wish I would have had this when I was much, much younger. Um, and bless John Green for writing it now, because I think it's going to be a great resource for any adults or young adults moving forward in the future. All right, guys, so that is it. Those are my top five books that I wish I would have had when I was younger. I just, there's so many books that I read that I think really shaped me. A lot of them miraculously were Stephen King books because I feel like Stephen King books taught me how to be a good person, which is weird, but, and you know, and then I had Harry Potter, which taught me how to be a good friend and to be fearless. But I wish I would have had these books more from a, I feel like, mental health standpoint or just a growing up standpoint because I had a very tumultuous childhood growing up. I was not from the best family. I was not, I, I didn't have the best experiences. And I think that having some of these books would have taught me more about humanity, more about why living is worth it, more about like my disorders and stuff that I had, and I think they would have been really, really great resources. So yeah, that is it. Leave down below your number one book that you wish you would have had when you were younger, that you think really would have shaped or helped you in some kind of way. But I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and think about subscribing, but I will see you guys in my next one.